Okay, I'm going to read the Christmas story today, and then we're going to gather around and uh, in the other room, and Emma's been baking like Betty Crocker, so nice. we're going to have a lot of goodies afterwards. Today we celebrate the birth of our Savior and a miracle that's it's a miracle that surpasses any other one, even the resurrection. Whenever you think about about a, the infinite God coming down in a finite form, still being God and being man is just incredible. It's one of the most incredible acts of love and grace that we could imagine. And the baby Jesus is still God and is now fully man as well and has ascended to the right hand of the Father where he lives forever and making intercession for us. And so as we read this story, we're going to remember that our great God uses people uh, to show forth his glorious plans, especially for our redemption. You see, this story isn't that unusual for us because a lot of us have heard it all our lives. But for the people of that day, for uh, God to come down and uh, assume human form, it was really unique. They were used to the stories about the gods coming down and taking on human form, and they would be somehow spectacular, like Zeus or Jupiter or Athena or whoever, and there would be great fanfare, and then they would go back and forth between being God and man. But our God did not do that. Amen. Our God came in the form of a babe, lived yes. here for 33 yes. years, was unjustly accused in accordance with the Father's plan, was hung down at the town dump and buried in an empty tomb. From there he rose again on the third day, and he appeared to as many as 500 at one time, and we know that he ascended bodily into heaven, and so he lives there, and now we have the Holy Spirit with us, the third person of the Trinity, co-equal, co-eternal, co-essential, and now we can live in accordance with God's plans for us. So let me just read this story. I'm going to start out of Matthew 1 and uh, pulled some slides from the Nativity Story movie. So we'll see if we can go through them somewhat in the same order. And uh, here we go. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's Gabriel talking to Mary. Joseph, her fiancé, was a good man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which is God with us. And that's phenomenal. Nobody else has ever been called Emmanuel. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. Now at that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. And this was the first, this was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all of them returned to their ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea. By the way, that's foretold specifically in Micah chapter 5. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, and he took with him Mary, his fiancée, who was now obviously pregnant. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a feed trough because there was no lodging available for them in the inn. That night there were shepherds in the field nearby guarding their flocks, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. 
Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see what has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried to the village, and they found Mary, and the baby, lying in the manger. And after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened, and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel, even before he was conceived. And so here's... Here's who from the prophet Isaiah that we have born to us. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Amen. Amen.